Welcome everyone to Young at Heart, session number 139. I'm Father James DeLucio with the Paulist Fathers here in the pantry to offer nursery rhymes, stories, songs, poems, larks, nonsense, Aesop's fables, and Mother Goose to keep us all young at heart. Today's selection is by special request of my friend Sheila, who invites us to go back to an Aesop's fable that perhaps is long forgotten from the years of our childhood, but a very popular Aesop's fable all the same. It's entitled The Crow in Thirst for Water, or The Crow and the Pitcher of Water, or The Thirsty Crow. Now, astounded as I was, in my volume, the Everyman Children's Library collection of Aesop's fables, lo and behold, it was not a complete collection. Who knew? So this popular fable was not in my book. I had to go searching on the internet. Lo and behold, I found something great that I want to share with you. It's called fablesofesop.com fablesofesop.com. Now I'll type it in the comment section, so you have to tap that word comment underneath the Facebook video in order to see. So this way you can copy and paste and explore this on your own. What I love about this fablesofesop.com is that when you search a particular Aesop fable, up come variations on the same fable, different translations, different people's retelling. You know how I love variations. And so among many, I've chosen three, not all, three of them to share with you because they're short. And I would love it if you would tell me your preferred version, one, two, or three, and please put it in the comments. So this is a chance for me to get to know you and your preferences a little better. You certainly know mine, so it's only fair, don't you think? Mm -hmm. I think so. All right, so here we go. Now, I also like in this website, they give you a theme or a motto for the particular fable. So this one is called Necessity is the Mother of Invention. Necessity is the mother of invention. But note, depending on each version, that may or may not be the actual moral or thought from the fable. But it does apply to this first one. Number one, make note of it. Number one, ready? Okay. In a spell of dry weather, when the birds could find very little to drink, a thirsty crow found a pitcher with a little water in it. But the pitcher was high and had a narrow neck. And no matter how he tried, the crow could not reach the water with its beak. The poor thing felt as if it must die of thirst. Then an idea came to him. Picking up some small pebbles, he dropped them into the pitcher, one by one. With each pebble, the water rose a little higher until at last there was a, the water had reached a level that he could drink. And the moral articulated from version number one, in a pinch, a good use of our wits may help us out. In a pinch, a good use of our wits may help us out. A true variation on necessity is the mother of invention. And now, version two by Elliot Jacobs. A crow, half dead with thirst, came upon a pitcher which had once been full of water. But when the crow put its beak into the mouth of the pitcher, he found that only 
very little water was left in it and that he could not reach far enough down into it to get at the water. He tried and he tried, but at last he had given up in despair. Then a thought came to him and he took a pebble and dropped it into the pitcher. And then he took another pebble and dropped it into the pitcher. And then he took another pebble and dropped it into the pitcher. And then he took another pebble and dropped that into the pitcher. And then he took another pebble and dropped that into the pitcher. And then he took another pebble and dropped that into the pitcher. And then he took another pebble and dropped that into the pitcher at last, at last. At last, he saw that the water began to well up near him. And after casting a few more pebbles into the pitcher, he was able to quench his thirst and save his life. The moral here is articulated as Little by little does the trick. Little by little does the trick. That's version two. Again, it's really strayed from necessity is the mother of invention, hasn't it? Little by little does the trick. Related, but a genuine variation. And here's the third by Jeffries Taylor, who builds on an old tradition that this fable was first told in verse, but we don't know for sure. But this is a modern verse interpretation. You must know that a crow felt inclined when she dined for some drink, being thirsty and hot. But puddle or pool, her fever did cool within twenty miles, for there was not. Then said she, woe is me, surely I must soon die. When lo, she espied at a distance, a pitcher or jug, alias Pipkin or Muck, which promised her the needed assistance. Apropos, said the crow, now I think I shall drink and I shall be there in a minute. But alas, for the bird still her draught was deferred, for scarcely a cupful was in it. How provoking, I'm choking, said she, but let's see. Sure, I've thought of a project to gain it. With stones from my bill, the deep jug I will fill, then the water will rise till my thirst it supplies. She did so, and so did obtain it. Had this two-legged thing been as stupid as many, though dying for drink she would not have got any. For the good that in life one most commonly gains arrives not by luck, but by using our brains. And here the moral is stated in the last verse. Things that are to be gained, we mustn't depend on luck but use our brains. I guess that's a little more related to necessity is the mother of invention. But the middle one was quite interesting with its moral, little by little does the trick. And now um, let me also make a note that in the first two versions, our crow was male, and in the last one, although written by a male, although Jeffries Taylor could be a woman, you know, some names go for both, um, the crow is female. So maybe that will influence your decision in whether your preference is one, two, or three. Please, please, let me know which one you liked best. 
tip of the hat. Thank you to Sheila for recommending this delightful Aesop's Fable for us. And again, if you want more variations, go to fablesofesop.com. Thank you so much for joining me today. Have a lovely Monday evening, Monday, August 3rd. I'm closing this recording at 6.06 p.m. And whatever time you happen to be watching it, know that the Lord sends love and grace and blessings for you. Just take them in, accept them, and revel in them. Meanwhile, stay safe. Stay healthy, wear your masks if you're going out, and God bless. Have a good night. Bye, everyone.